Hey everyone. Hey Max. Hello everyone. So Playwright 1.39, what's new? Let's take a look. But before we take a look, of course, we have, what do we have, Max? The Our tip of the tip day. Of the day. Yes. Exactly. So the tip of the day today is prefer trace over video and screenshots. Cause like it's more performant. You've got better debugging experience. You can use the trace locally. So UI mode. And if you click on show trace view and VS code, you're using the trace viewer. And of course on CI. So on CI in your playwright config, you would set up use and you would say trace on first retry video on no screenshot on no. And don't do trace on either. Cause that will record a trace for every single test, even if it passes. And that's like, just no, not good. Am I right, Max? Not good. Yeah. Yes, and don't forget to have like retries to one or two. Otherwise, on first retry won't work. Exactly. So trace, use the trace over video and screenshots. Right. Let's go into the agenda. Playwright 1.39, we've got box test steps. Really cool. And we've got custom matchers for expect. And then we're going to merge those test fixtures and custom matchers. So let's go straight to the first one. Box test steps. New in Playwright. 1.39 and we've got a demo for you. So let me show you what I've done here, right? I've written a test for a shopping page um, where we're basically we're putting products into a shopping cart and then we're opening that shopping cart to see if they're there. Um, there are many ways from this page. There are a lot of different scenarios, right? You can add to the cart from the carousel. You can add from a search, you know, when you click on, you know, a placeholder and you type in, the product name and you press enter, you add it to the page. Uh, then you got a products page and then you got like a specific product page like the laptops page. And this could go on and on and on, right? So these are our scenarios. Now what was happening was, I was basically in all my tests doing this um, page get by role button name add to bag.click and then the page get by label cart.click, right? In every single test. So to stop it being repetitive, I actually put it into a function called add and view cart. And then I can use that function in each of my tests, right? Makes it much easier. Now you'll see, I've also put it in a test step, right? This is just basically to make it easier um, with reporting and stuff. So everything that's inside this function kind of gets, you know, hidden into an actual step. Let me show you what that looks like. Here's each step. I'd look at this one. I un if I click here, you can see that it's kind of like all that step is in there, right? All those actions are in here. And it could be like five, 10 of these, right? So but you see it in the trace field, you see it as well, right? Yeah. So it's uh, it's really cool because you can kind of like just really simply kind of go through your test. So I like doing this. You don't have to. You could not use a test step. I think it's really cool. Now. This is nothing new, right, Max? This is just normal. That's old. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is show you the problem I was having. I've, I've commented out this line because I just want to break this test, right? So very simply, and I'm going to run this test. Now, when I run this test, obviously, it's going to fail. But what I wasn't happy with was the error messaging. So if we see here in VS Code, it's showing me this little red triangle. It's pointing to the click. And it's saying something was wrong here on this click method, right? But really, that's not the case. And you can see I've got like um, all these at test box step, at add and view card. At, and it's like, I don't know. I don't know where to go. There's too much information here. I just could want to concentrate file, right? where it's coming from. Sorry, Max? Yeah, it could be a different file, right? Or a different module. And then it's hard to go back where the actual, where it failed inside the test. Exactly. I've put this file just for this demo here, but it could be in another file, exactly. So how do we fix this? Well, this is where our new feature comes in, which is called box, not box step, box true. And what we do now is we're basically saying this step, I want you to be boxed, right? Put you in a box. I want to hide the implementation detail. So now if I run this test, of course it's going to fail again. I haven't fixed the test. But what I've done is I've made my life easier. So let's see, look at that. The little red triangle is now pointing to the function I've created, this add and view cart. And it's a lot clearer that I need to concentrate on 
either this function because the error is somewhere in here or before it, but I'm actually in the test itself and not in the function. What do you think, Max? Very, very nice. Where, where else do you see it? Like, I think on CI probably, right? Like when a test is failing on CI and like, let's say, list reporter, for example, would show it. And Exactly. Uh, so you'll see it in the reporter just like this. And, and this yeah. is how you're going to be debugging. So it's much more user friendly. That's nice. Yeah. And also, a lot of our users are using page object model. So I created the same um, tests in using Palm. So I've got these buy from the carousel, add to cart. So the exact same tests, right? And they're just using these functions that I've created, search for product. So all these in kind of um, Palm language, right? Now, as you can see here, I've got this function, which is box step. Max, do you want to tell us about this function? Absolutely, absolutely. So this looks like a TypeScript decorator to me, right? And maybe you've not used the TypeScript decorator yet. It's it came, I think it's very popular from like Angular, the new Angular, like since four or five years, they heavily use it. And what a decorator is doing, you can imagine it's like wrapping an existing function. So when you call a method on a class and you have a decorator on, on it, it would call a decorator first, and then the decorator could do whatever. And in our case, what we do when you call a function on your POM and then have it boxed, it would like uh, first create a test step in line 42, for example, uh, 41. It would create this test step with a good name based on like the name of the method and then call the actual uh, function underneath. But uh, we do it with our new feature, right? We box it in line 43. So every function where you have this decorator uh, we box it and we will never show the implementation details. And Debbie will show that now in action. Yeah. So as you can see, I've then using this box step on these two. I could use it on all of them, right? But I'm happy to just use them on, on these two. And then when I go back and run this test, let's run this one that's going to fail. Um, it's basically going to give that same what we've seen before without the page object model, where we're basically hiding the implementation detail. We're pointing to the POM add to cart as opposed to inside the actual, you know, the click action of the add to cart function. And, um, and that's basically um, it. So we can use test steps on POM, or we can use it without POM. Kind of cool, right, Max? Very nice, very helpful for debugging. So let's go back to a recap, just in case, you know, you didn't catch it all. We basically have, you know, an add to cart here, uh, we've got a test step, and we're basically putting our click action in there, and we're setting box equal true. This will hide the implementation details. Error messages point to the step call. And then you have also in POM the same thing. You've got your function here, the box step, and then you're just doing at box step and putting it up um, on just on the line above the function. And this is leveraging TypeScript decorators to wrap functions. A boxed test stop step gets defined with the name of the method. So I hope that was clear because now it's time to merge those test fixtures and custom expect matchers, which is new in Playwright 1.39. Let's take a look at a demo. Let's start here with like the test definition of like how you would actually use it. So here we do like a wait expect page. This is very typical, right, Debbie? This is yeah. like a lot of existing assertions are working the way like this. But then we have here a new one to be logged in with user. And this is really specific to the application I'm testing. In this example, it's an artificial example. Uh, we are want to check that we are logged in with our user John Doe. But where is it actually defined, right? We can just click on it. And uh, here we see the definition. It's defined with our new way of extending it. So let's go, uh, let's go in line one and see how we extend it. So first we impl uh, import like test, how we usually do it. But what's the interesting part is like this here. We import expect as base expect because we're gonna create our new expect. So we just want to have it referenced as base. After that, we're gonna call it base expect.extend. And this is the new method we are gonna add. Uh, base expect.extends accepts an object here. And in this object, you can pass any, any new measures you're going to use. 
in this case, to be logged in with user. And let me try to wrap this. The first argument here is the page, and this reflects actually what you pass to the expect instance. And then you call it with the name here, and then afterwards, the new name, the full name gets passed here as a second argument. So this is important to understand, like the order of arguments, how it gets passed over to expect. And what you, de what you do inside is now fully up to the user, right? Fully up to you. In our case, we, we are going to make here an HTTP request with our API request context. We're checking that the response is okay. We're returning if it passed or not with a good message and an actual value. And then we check if the response body is okay and so on. What, what you want to do inside, totally up to you. You could fetch like multiple elements on the page. You could, uh, you could assert a table and so on, all that. You could use some native NPM modules, interact with your database. Uh, and so on, yeah. So these are custom expect measures, and this is now possible to create them way easier than before. And it looks much clearer, right? If you were going to read this test, you know this expect is to be logged in with users, so you know exactly what it's doing, as opposed to like get by text John Doe, right? Exactly, absolutely, yeah. Much, much more easier to read instead of like calling a custom function here without using expect. Cool. So these were custom expect measures. But let's dive here in now into fixtures. You folks have probably used all fixtures over the place the past few years, maybe without knowing actually that you're using fixtures. Because, because page is a fixture. Because page is a fixture. So everything here inside these curly brackets is a fixture. And page is the most famous one, right? And you use it every day when you write your end-to-end -end tests. But let's, let's try to understand first and make a quick recap about what are fixtures and how to define them and why do you need them or why should you use them? So uh, a fixture is a really easy way of having like a reusable logic before your test and after your test and sharing this across your test suite. So okay, when, but Max, yes. we could just use before each and after each, right? Uh, absolutely, you could. I think like you could leverage all the features with before each and after each and before all or after all, but it's really repetitive. You would have to define it in all your test files on one hand. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you need to define globals, like set some stuff in the global scope of the file. And that's not really cool, not really clean and like clean JavaScript TypeScript terms. I see. So let's take a look here I, and see how we define a custom feature. So the way how we do it is similar to we do it in expect. So we import here test, but not just as test. We def uh, import it as base test. And then we're going to extend it. First, we're going to call this function, but we pass a generic. A generic is like in TypeScript a way to give like more type information to the actual function you're calling. So we pass here some object over, actually like an interface with like the my test fixture equals string type. So then when we call extend, we know my test fixture has the type string. And this string is very important for what the actual fixture underneath will get. So here inside our test, we see that this my test fixture, when we use it, is accepting and receiving a string, right? So this is what this line is doing. Of the actual test fixture implementation, is what we pass here then to the expect function. So we say my test fixture, it's like the same name as before, and here is the implementation. The first uh, argument of the implementation is like uh, the, the fixtures which you want to use, either like in this case, no fixtures, but as Debbie said, we have access to all the fixtures. For example, page, context. Is uh, mobile. Is mobile, all the fixtures, and all the custom fixtures which you might create and extend uh, during it. And the second argument here is use. Use is like, you, it's a callback, which you have to await. And here is the actual value which you pass over. So this select this value, which I have selected here, is the actual string, what we defined here. So here, the type needs to match. And uh, yeah, so these are fixtures. And in this case, this is a test fixture. Very important to note, a test fixture is a fixture uh, which gets created before a test then the test runs and then deleted or like executed uh, after the test finishes. 
There are also worker fixtures. For that, I recommend checking out the dogs, which would run before a worker uh, will run any tests, and it would run the use section after all the tests inside the worker are completed. So, uh, yeah. That's very really cool, Max, but we've had fixtures forever. This is nothing new. Yes, this was just a short recap about like the feature which I show you now. So here we have a little bit uh, more complex example. Uh, I created like a xfixtures.ts, which does very similar to things to what we did before. So we define here a new feature called xbuilder, and uh, we create an xbuilder instance. What is xbuilder? It's a third party library, which is really good in detecting accessibility issues on your page. So we create this uh, instance here with the page uh, fixture instance. So it uses the actual page underneath. And then we're going to use it. Using means we have access to it later on. So the, the, this is like X fixtures, which I created. And then a coworker of mine created these console fixtures. Console fixtures are like, uh, I don't know exactly what he did here, but he said like new page console. It's some class which uh, which will record all the console messages, ah, I see, stores them inside the instance and uh, passes them over to the actual test. And later on, he created an, uh, he created an, a custom assertion, a custom matcher to have no console errors where he checks if there are any console errors. And uh, yeah, he gave me the requirement, I would love to merge both. Like in this case, both files are like just files, but these could be like, different NPM modules, different folders, if you have a monorepo structure, for example, or you could publish them to NPM. And this wasn't possible before to merge them. But now with like the new release, we make it possible to merge them. And the way how this works is you import all your fixtures from like the X fixtures here, you import all your console fixtures here, and then you use our new functions, which we are exposing, merge expects and merge fixtures. And you just pass here all the instances over and what you get back are the new instances and test and expect look familiar, right, Debbie? So these are the new, the new instances which you use. Really in the new test. Yes. So here we are just like importing these instances and they have access to both the X builder and the, mm. console, uh, the page console instance. And you can use them in any of your fixtures or tests. Exactly. So here I'm using page console and let's let's uh, do something with like X builder. Let's do X builder, uh, await, expect uh, X builder to have no X violations and that will all work. And we can execute the tests with our uh, fixtures. In this case, uh, it passed because there are no errors. This is a normal console log, but we can also do console error run it and it hopefully should like show an error yes here it did so oh. uh, yeah these are custom expect matchers custom fixtures and merging them together amazing so summary of playwright 1.39 we have box steps hides the implementation detail and the errors point to the step call custom expect matchers to extend the playwright assertions by providing custom matchers and you can merge those fixtures and expects and they could be from multiple files or modules. And of course, new browsers, because every time we update Playwright, we're also giving you the new browser. With every release, we update the browsers. So make sure you always update to the latest npm i-d at playwright slash test at latest. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Max.